a second. Right. Hello everyone. My name is Ernie David. I'm now gonna teach you about words about Dr. W. E. B. Du Bois and Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune. Who are we? Native museums learning about black history. We love sharing what we learn with others. Everyone deserves to know their history. We have built confidence in children and inspired them to read stories about real life heroes and sheroes. Let's help everyone have fun. Listen to the speaker. Email us when you have a question. Explore the books you should get. Have fun. Share what you learn with others. Who is Mary? Mary Jane McLeod Bethune was born on July 10, 1875. Mary had 14 sisters and brothers from May, Louisville, South Carolina. Can you believe that, guys? If you had 14 sisters and brothers, that would equal 28 siblings. You can have a whole Justice League. Mary was the only child in our family to get education. One night, she read a Bible to her family. Fun fact about the Bible. Before she read the Bible, um, she, she saw it and when she, she tried to read for it to read it, one of her sisters slapped her hand and said, hey, don't read that, you can't read. And she said, I will read. God bless, I will read. She got an education and then she wrote it. Her parents were so proud, they were crying. Mm -hmm. In seventh grade, she went to school at Scotia University in Concord, North Carolina. What did she do to achieve her goals? Under seminary, she went to Moody Bible College in Chicago. With an education, she could return to North Carolina as a teacher. With only $1.50, she started a school for black children. She used recycled school supplies for five students. It's like, it's not kind of like chalk in the early days. It was just like, um, Pencils, paper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't really like those things, like rocks and stuff, mm -hmm. or the pencils. Yeah. She used recycled school supplies with five students. By 1905, there was 100 and growing. Can you believe that? My school has four. Mm -hmm. In fact, um, how many students does your school have? You can email us like that. Mm -hmm. In 1906, with the help of donations, she built the first Bethune school. In 1923, she joined Cochrane Boys School for one large campus. She made him speak all over the world. She said, our children must never lose their zeal for building a better world. How was she successful? President Roosevelt appointed Mary to the National Youth Administration on April 25, 1945. She took part in founding the United Nations. Mary earned the Springer, Springer Medal for the NAACP. Or you could just say NAACP. But uh, what I said, NAACP, is just easier. Or you could just say NAACP in 1935. Don't say it. It's just 1935. Mary received the Francis Drexel Award for Distinguished Service in 1937. Mary was awarded the Thomas Jefferson Award for Outstanding Leadership in 1942. So, what the awards you heard just aren't the awards you know, like um, the Nobel Peace Prize. Those are very important awards for the ones that got scholarships, like my mom. <laughs> 
eventually, Bethune Cookman became a university still thriving today. Did you know that? It was founded in 1904 by Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune, and now it still stands at 2020. You can also go there too. I, activity for kids, let's take a virtual field trip. We love visiting, visiting museums and national parks. Come with us virtually on a trip to the Washington DC is Miss, Miss Bethune's Council House. All right, let's go visit Bethune, Mary McLeod Bethune Council House. All right, Ernie, where are we gonna go first? Welcome to the virtual tour. Come in, everyone, come in. This is the stairs. Let's go to that room with the red carpet. But first, a video. Hello, my name is John Fowler, and I'm a park ranger here at the Mary McLeod Bethune Council House National Historic Site. Mary McLeod Bethune bought this home in 1943 for $15,500 to serve as the first national headquarters of the National Council of Negro Women. This organization was established on December 5th, 1935 by Mary McLeod Bethune to serve as the authoritative voice of African American women living in the United States. The home also served as a congregational space for African Americans, particular African American women, when visiting Washington. The third floor of the home served as boarding room spaces for those women if they weren't able to find hotels here in the nation's capital. Wow, those were a lot of women. Don't worry, boys, like me. I'm sure I saw a man right there. These are some of the couches. She sat on that couch. This is the piano. Let's learn about the piano audio and what it was like. Now let us and sing Mrs. Bethune's favorite song. And when we talk about love in this song, we're talking about agape. And these are the most, in, this is the most important um, meeting room of meetings. Very important meetings. This visit to registering is the thing that we can bring the FBI in on. Uh, whenever anyone interferes with voting, the FBI may step in. So, um, what's very interesting to me. Um, the registrar, they let me fill out a form and then said, we are not processing any forms until it's fall. So that stops that right there. And then the Justice Department says there's a limit of 33 days that you can hold. That's all you can hold if you think about being that law. Also, there's a big sign up that says, no one can help you make out the registration form. And this is against the law, the Civil Rights Act, that someone should help you. So that was a very important saying up from someone. Okay, so what are we going to do next? We're going from teachers 
to heroes. Who was W.E.B. William Edward Burkhart, W.E.B. Don't say. I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> was born February 23, 1868 in Great Barrington, Massachusetts. Woman did not grow up understanding the color and differences. She attended public schools and excelled. He didn't become excellent from school because he got a bad education. He was really smart and finished early. William's mother was disabled, which means she cannot walk, which required him to work at a young age, like deliver newspapers. He delivers groceries and newspapers. Like I said, he became interested in public issues early, writing articles for the school newspaper in high school. In 1884, William became the first black student from, to graduate from high school, which is Harvard. You can go there too. That was that high school. Now, what did we say? What was he saying? She said, I mean, he is said, now is the accepted time. Welcome, not tomorrow, not some more convention season. It's now. Right. How did he reach his schools? With the help of his community, William attended and graduated from Fish University in 1888. William became known for giving scholarly speeches, studying chemistry, Greek and German empires. He, he knew to help his community, he needed more education. W.E.B. then applied for a grant and earned an opportunity to study in Germany. He must be very proud of that. After studying overseas for a few years, W.E.B. returns to the U.S. and attends Harvard. He, beca he became the first African American to receive a Ph.D. from Harvard in 1895. Harvard is not a high school, like I said. That was just a mistake that I said. Because his, um, I got Harvard is a college, university. Same thing. That was W.E.B. successful. In 1896, he marries Nina Gomer and studies the lives of black Americans. Sound like a pretty name for, um, Wife. In 1897, he becomes a professor at Atlanta University and begins organizing conferences on the problems of Black Americans. In 1903, he publishes The Souls of Black Folk. 1909 and 1910, he co founds the NAACP, the only organization that still exists today. Actually, Thurgood Marshall what we did actually worked in the NAACP. Even Mary McLeod Bethune and W.E.B. They might have all met mm -hmm. and had a very important conversation. The NAACP mission is to ensure the political, education, social, and economic equality of rights of all persons and to eliminate race-based discrimination. Let's learn more with the YouTube. This is an educational YouTube, which is not really the ones that you usually watch. But I think you would enjoy Frank this Fun with learning and a W.E.B. Du Bois biography. Okay, so in history, looking up and sharing stories about heroes is what I love. So if you've never heard of W.E.B. Du Bois, don't trip, because I got you. For starters, W.E.B. Du Bois was a journalist, educator, and well-known civil rights activist. W.E.B. Du Bois was born on February 23rd, 1868, in Great Barrington, Massachusetts, and that's where life began for him. During this time in history, many African Americans were not fortunate enough to go to school and get a good education. It wasn't the same for W.E.B. Du Bois. Growing up in a mainly European town, he didn't see racism like others encountered. There, he had the opportunity to go to school with other white children and get an education. 
wasn't until later on in life, when he attended Fisk University, that he encountered racism for the first time. After seeing how African Americans were treated, that sparked a fire in W.E.B. Du Bois, and he began to stand up for the rights of African Americans. Continuing on in school, W.E.B. Du Bois got his bachelor's degree there at Fisk University, but he wasn't stopping there. Another big thing that he did was in 1995, W.E.B. Du Bois became the first African American to get his doctorate. University. Oh, yeah. Now, of course, none of this is as easy as it seems, but Dr. W.E. Du Bois did his thing. Just like it costs money today, he went to school, worked hard, took some odd jobs, got scholarships, and also took up loans to get through school. After finishing school here in the U.S., W.E.B. Du Bois went to school overseas in Berlin. That's Germany. It was there he got to meet people who had different ways of thinking on how to treat others in society, and W.E.B. Du Bois bought those ideas right back here to the United States of America. W.E.B. Du Bois went on to publish writings like The Philadelphia Negro, A Social Study, and The Souls of Black Folk. Now, one thing that put him on a national stage was his disagreement with Booker T. Washington, another African-American leader there at that time, who had the Atlanta Compromise. With the Atlanta Compromise, it sacrificed African-Americans being in leadership in order to get good jobs. But W.E.B. Du Bois wasn't hearing that. He stood for full equality for everybody, no matter their race, color, or creed. Now, another big accomplishment in his life was, of course, fighting for the rights of African Americans. He helped to co-found the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, which is now known today mainly as the NAACP. Check this out. Living his life and fighting for the rights of African Americans is what he did. He ended up dying at the age of 95 on August 27, 1963. The crazy thing about this was he died one day before Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. gave his I Have a Dream speech in Washington on August 28, 1963. When it came to the life of W.E.B. Du Bois, his voice will go down as one of the major contributors to the African American and civil rights movement in the early 20th century. And I hope you enjoyed those fun facts with W.E.B. Du Bois. I hope you enjoyed that video because I feel like watching it again. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. He's good. All right. Let's, you can learn more with these books to check out from the library. And choose this book, these book, as a free prize through the summer reading program. Next slide at September 26th. 1.30, we'll do Benjamin Banneker and Mary Brownson, Mary Browser, Silver War Spy. And last but not least, our fundraiser! We have passed out the flyer and help us raise money for the Third Institute. When? Friday, September 4th. And where Panda Express located in Weber. In Bolingbrook. Bolingbrook. All right. Does anyone have questions? All right. Great presentation. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, feel free to use the raise your hand. I'll turn on your microphone or you can use the Q&A button on your screen. Okay, do you see a couple questions? Hang on one moment while I let your audio catch up. All right, go ahead. Hi, Ernie. My question is, of all of the uh, Black history figures you've studied, who is your favorite? And who do you, what qualities do you most uh, appreciate about that particular figure? Who are you read about right now? You like him a lot. Uh, he's not really my favorite. Um, favorite. Uh, I act. 
Actually, actually, I really liked um Leonard Marshall. He's my favorite. He actually stood up for civil rights. If we didn't have him, we would be living in the ashes. And what qualities did you like about? Do you like about their good? Read a lot. Mm -hmm. What else? He got a good education, like W. E. B. E. Boys. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Good morning, Ernie, or afternoon. The question that I have is, did W.E.B., um, did he die of natural causes at 95, or what What happened to him? Do you know? I, yeah, I think he died because he was very ill. He was ill and old, and he died in Africa. He decided oh. to live out his days in Africa um, when he started seeing Martin Luther King and other civil rights activists take up the mantle. Um, he loved to research and study and uh, stayed and lived over there in his life. Wow, okay, thank you very much. And we also had a comment from the chat that says, great job, Ernest, Levi. <laughs> Thanks, Levi. Any more questions? Hillary, are you going to ask a question? Hillary. Oh, hi, Hillary. <laughs> you really should. All right. We also had another comment on the Q&A box. It says, Ernie, great job, Oliver and Bash. Thanks. Questions about Mary? Ooh, her? So I'm going to turn on these microphones and then um, you should be able to hear them soon. Everybody enjoy her, her council house. Hi, Ernie. Hello. The question for you is why did you want to teach other people about African American history? Because. Everyone deserves to know their history. When did you start doing this? Uh, maybe two or one year. That's awesome, Ernie. It'll be two years in December. Yeah. Yeah. A lot we, of classes. We, some of them we already knew. But some of them were like completely for forgotten. We didn't even know them. Like Mae Jemison, Thurgood mm -hmm. Marshall, mm -hmm. W.E.B. Boyce, Mary McLeod Bethune. Mm -hmm. Some other people too, right? We've, we've, taught them, we've taught about a lot of people. If we didn't have these heroes, Black women and white women won't get a rice and we'll be and should be serving. Hey Ernie, I have a question. Ooh. Did on. Miss Oh, did Miss Mary know how to read or was her family right? She didn't know how to read. Um she she didn't really know how to read before she got her Bible. Mm -hmm. Wow. Definitely. Thank you. Ah, okay. What's that? Just you saying. Thank you. Finish and tell Miss Mary's story. Oh, and well, she didn't really um read any the Bible or anything. She just said, "I will read," and then she read one of the easiest books. Like I picked up the cat. I I like the cat. The cat ran. The cat stopped. Stop cat. Mm -hmm. and then she I learned, like ice cream. And she learned to read and then, um, then she was she, the only person in her family that learned, right? Yeah. And then she could read chapter books like 
chapter nine. Curse the red berry. <laughs> yeah. Any more questions? Well, I don't know. Everyone is looking for things to do in the pandemic, so I put the um, virtual field trip back. It's our national park system. And so definitely, if you get a chance, take a look. There's a lot more in Miss uh, Mary's council house to learn about and um, review. And hopefully one day when we all uh, get out of this pandemic, we can visit uh, our national treasures like the council house again. But we thank you guys for coming and hope that you can uh, support our fundraiser that keeps our mission going. Oh, we've got one more question from the Q&A. Oh, yeah. um, it's uh, for those of us who are out of state, how can we support the fundraiser? Sure, so you can, um, Panda Express does have um, pandaexpress.com and you can like buy frozen things that they'll ship to you and we, as long as you use this code here, um, you can, it'll still count towards TTI. You just have to make your purchases on September 4th uh, if you do it online and use the code. So lots of ways to, um, to be a part of it. And then we also have, if anyone's interested, um, this is our website. We do have a donate section on the page. You can always donate directly and uh, every penny we raise um, goes towards books for the children uh, from diverse authors. They go to, um, right now we're trying to build uh, storybooks, like many uh, pamphlets and documents that we can send out to kids that come or if you can't make it and you just want to learn more about the heroes and sheroes that we teach, um, we are hoping to print those and be able to mail them out at no cost for them so everyone can learn their history. So um, any support is welcome. And we always just thank everyone for coming and uh, supporting our organization. All right, thank you everybody. And uh, we'll have the recording up soon. Uh, visit fountaindale.org slash YouTube. Um, and again, thank you so much, Professor Ernie, Dr. Judith, another great presentation. Thank you all. Take care. Bye.